Story time about the girl who left me unconscious in the girl's bathroom. So a little background information. I was pretty young at the time. I was in seventh grade and I was 11 years old. And there was this girl who we're gonna call Jenna. Jenna hated me for absolutely no fucking reason. She would bully me because I had red hair and she would text me literally every day at the same time telling me to off myself and how I was weird and how nobody liked me. One day she randomly started being nice to me. She sat with me at lunch and her water bottle was empty and she asked if I needed mine filled up too. Stupidly, I said yes. Well, she ended up putting drugs in my water bottle. After like 20 minutes, I started feeling sick, so I went to the bathroom and I was kneeling over the toilet when everything went black. Well, when I didn't come back from the bathroom, my teacher got worried, so she sent security looking for me. They were banging on my stall. Obviously, I was fucking unconscious, so I didn't answer. So then they called the fire department, the police, the ambulance were all there. Like for part... Story time. So yesterday, my friends and I all went to the fair and there were six of us in total. And none of us wanted to have to worry about driving there and parking, so we just Ubered instead. So we left the fair around 11.15 and we walked to a nearby shopping center where their Uber picked us up about 10 minutes late. We ended up leaving at 11.30. We get in the Uber, the man says hello, and we head home the normal way. Everything's fine. And my parents don't like when I Uber, so they were tracking me on Life360 from the moment I got in the car. After about 10 minutes in, I get a text from my mom and it said, where are you? I look up from my phone and I realize I have no idea where we are and Ubers know their directions, they know how to take you home. We were 20 minutes out of the way. So I'm terrified, my mom's texting me nonstop, literally about to call the police. I'm gonna run out of time, but posting part two today. Some men are absolutely disgusting, like yuck, 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 oh my god. So you know, I was just at the gym, you know, being a baddie, trying to build a fatty bitch, and there's a guy working out next to me, and all of a sudden a girl passes by, and like, he doesn't even look at her, like, doesn't look at her face, just looks at her ass, and like, stares for a good 30 seconds, like a weirdo, like a straight 30 seconds, like, I understand peeking, like, 10 seconds, but 30 seconds, just straight... And you know, there's nothing wrong with checking a girl out, because some of these girls out here be like they be making you break your neck just to look at them because they're bad bitches so it's well deserved but the problem is this man had the audacity to look at his friend and be like that's a hard sex and then he started criticizing everything about this girl's body even down to the fucking leggings she was wearing oh my god but then bitch it got worse because then i started noticing that they were following different girls around the gym while they were doing their workouts and they were rating them and critiquing them as to why they wouldn't or would smash like what the fuck and in my head, I'm like, first of all, y'all are hard for us. I don't know why y'all talking when you look like the creepy uncles at the barbecue, bitch. Story time about how my fiance broke off our wedding because of my best friend. My fiance and I had been together for two years, but my best friend and I had been friends for over eight years. So like, I trusted her with my life. When my fiance and I met, she approved and she loved him. She was always looking for a new relationship because she could never commit to anyone. Eventually, I started feeling like she was envious of the relationship because I had found someone that I truly loved and that wanted to marry me. On the other hand, she was a serial dater and went out with so many guys she couldn't even keep track. One night we had a double date and she brought this new guy she met. Throughout the whole date, my fiance and my best friend were hitting it off, talking, making jokes, and I was actually really happy because I was happy they got along. Her date even noticed this and commented about how we should switch dates. I thought it was so funny. Well, little did I know that after that night, they actually started texting every once in a while. Inside jokes and memes, stuff like that. I did know about it and I thought it was really cute and I was so happy that they were getting along. After all, she was going to be the godmother of our future children. One day I saw she sent him a picture through text message. You'll never guess what I found. Come back for part two. Story time about how my boyfriend gave me sleeping pills before his boys night out. I had been dating my boyfriend for a year and we always had a pretty trusting relationship. One weekend, he was going to have a boys night out with his friends and I was going to stay home. However, earlier in the day, we had gone into an argument about how he never checks his phone while he's out or replies to my text to check in. He said he shouldn't have to check in with me while he's out and I disagreed because I just want to make sure that he's okay. Fast forward to later that night when he's getting ready, I told him that even though we're fighting, I still expect him to keep in touch with me. He agrees this time without putting up a fight and asks me if I want to have a drink with him before he goes. He makes us some cocktails and we drink them together while we wait for his friends to come pick him up. When his friends get there, he kisses me goodbye and leaves. Not even half an hour later, I'm knocked out cold. I remember waking up once just for a second to use the bathroom but then knocking out again. In the morning when I woke up, he was asleep next to me and I was really confused as to why I slept so much when I wasn't even tired. When my boyfriend woke up, he mentioned how nice it was that I hadn't messaged him and how I must have slept through the night after those cocktails. This raised some red flags and I quickly questioned him about what was in the cocktails. At first, he called me crazy and told me that he didn't do anything to them. However, after about 20 minutes of accusing him, he finally confessed. 
So today I went to church to confess one of my most recent sins to the priest. So I sat in the confession booth. I told the priest, I said, Father, I have sinned. And the priest wanted to hear all about it. So I said to him, I said, Father, last night I almost cheated on my wife. And the priest goes, what do you mean you almost cheated on your wife? So I told him, I said, Father, I was in a room with another girl. We got naked and all we did was rub each other. We didn't actually do anything. My priest turns to me and goes, rubbing together is the same thing as putting it in. Now for your sins, you must never see that woman again. You must say five Hail Marys and put $50 into the donation box. So anyway, I tell the priest I'm not going to see the girl again. I say my five Hail Marys and I walk out the door. So all of a sudden, my priest comes running after me saying, Hey, I saw you. You didn't put $50 into the donation box. I looked at him and said, Yeah, I did. I took the money and rubbed it against the box because it's the same thing as putting it in. When I was younger, there was a girl I knew who lived in our neighborhood. None of the kids liked her because they claimed that she stinked and acted weird. When they talked about her, I kind of felt bad. So I became friends with her. Yeah, of course, I got the, why do you hang out with her? But she really wasn't all that bad. But her scent, they were kind of right about that. One day, she invites me over to her house and she was very excited because she told me I was the first person to ever come over. And I felt so honored, so I went. But when I went into her house, it smelled very bad, almost nauseating, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be rude. She had a lot of uncles that lived with her family. Honestly, it was like four to five families in one house, to be honest. But she first introduced me to her stepmom. I said hi to her, but she just stared at me in disgust. Then we went to her room to play. As it got later, I told her I needed to go home. But she begged me to stay longer because she was scared. I told her I'd come tomorrow, and she just starts crying. She runs into her bed and falls into her sheets which lifted her skirt. There were bruises all over her thighs. Let me know if y'all want a part two. I'm gonna tell you guys why I don't keep food in my room anymore. At least why I don't keep this particular food in my room anymore. So when I was a kid, my dad used to leave the country a lot. Every time he would come back, he'd always bring us some sort of goodie. It'd always be like bracelets, t-shirts, and candy. One time after a trip to, I think it was Dominican Republic, brought us back a bunch of lollipops. These are not normal lollipops like you're thinking in your head. These are these giant brown flat lollipops. Now, instead of eating them, me and my sister decided it would be best to hoard them. Yes, that's right. Keep them in our room for as long as possible. For what purpose? I don't know. I think it was probably like, no, we can't eat them now. If something happens and we need them. Bruh. It's not every day that we got candy, apparently. So we kept them in our room. We kind of put them on display up against the wall, right in between both of our beds in this very room. This time I was about six. My sister's about a year and a half older than me. So she was like seven, I guess. Now these lollipops were given to both of us. They were displayed equally distance between both of our beds because they belonged to us both. I'm not really sure how this happened. But one night me and my sister went to bed, but then my sister started tossing and turning. She calls out for my mom. My mom comes and she's like, what's wrong? Oh my God, I'm ready. This is why you should always sit in the back seat. Vivian was spending a year in Korea when something terrifying happened. One night she was going out with her two roommates who spoke Korean and at the end of the night, they decided to get a taxi home. Vivian sat in the front and her two roommates sat in the back. This would be her first mistake. The driver spoke really good English and began telling jokes. Vivian found them really funny, but soon realized that her roommates weren't laughing. In fact, they had a strange expression on their faces. Vivian said what's wrong, but they wouldn't answer. Suddenly, one of her roommates said something to the driver in Korean, and he pulled over on the side of the road. Vivian knew something was wrong. They weren't anywhere near their apartment, but her roommates got out of the taxi and started walking away quickly. Vivian paid the driver, then got out to follow them. And that's when she found out the truth. Her roommate said, did you hear it? It was coming from the trunk of the taxi, a woman's voice saying, help me, help me. My boyfriend left me for his best friend, who's a guy. A few days passed by and I was super devastated. That's when my boyfriend comes and knocks on my door. Then he gave me the worst news of all. He told me he was going to marry his best friend, Roger. He explained to me that they had been in love for a long time, but they never told each other anything. It was only until recently that they started hooking up. Looking back, it all makes sense. He and Roger would hang out all the time and I was never invited. Roger even got my boyfriend hired as a makeup artist at his job. They were constantly together. But at the same time, I had never seen my boyfriend so happy. He said he could finally be himself. This is when I realized that it was for the best. I stopped begging him to get back with me and I started dating other people. They even invited me to their wedding, which was beautiful. Now we have dinner a few times a month and I've got a new boyfriend. Life is crazy. 